Hi, everyone. So, um, so my name is uh, Jonathan. I'm here with my colleague here. Uh, together, we will present this uh, S-scale device management solution. Um, I will go to the first part, and here we'll go to the second part. So um, for Meta, um, to deploy um, CXL memory device um, at a scale, at a Meta scale, we not only uh, need to meet the performance requirement, the TCO requirement, the power budget, um, um, we also need to make sure it seamlessly can integrate into our data center. And uh, a new skill is introduced, it gets, the uh, topology gets a little more complex, but we need to make the management as simply as possible. And uh, so that uh, this is mostly, we're talking about, about this in today's, um, in today's presentation. So we hope to collaborate with you guys. So here is the uh, uh, CXL memory system topologies. I, I don't want to uh, repeat this, but we have go, going through this multiple, uh, we have talked about this multiple times in today's session. That's directly attached, pool of memory, shared memory, and fabric mem memory. Right, so um, um, we, uh, today we, we will uh, target as a direct uh, attached memory where you have the capacity added. So, um, so you can feed an entire database, let's say, into, into the memory. And you add the me uh, bandwidth for bandwidth intensive or um, bandwidth um, sensitive workload, we can increase uh, the, the performance. And uh, even for latency, um, sensitive workload uh, because of not memory are always hot. So we actually get the memory, the performance actually keep almost the same level uh, with everything, if everything is native uh, memory. Um, this is a sample topology of a sample CXL memory system. You see that uh, the CPU has the CXL uh, root complex um, and uh, um, CPU has local attached memory. And then it connects to a CXL memory expansion board. Uh, on the board, there's a CXL um, memory expander, ASIC, that has a logic for CXL, logic for memory controller, and then it, it connects to the DDR uh, media. Next, please. Thanks. So, so we can see those industry trends, right? So the CXL memory expansion use cases are keep increasing, and uh, we forecast in the next a uh, few years, it might become multi-billion dollar industry, who knows? And uh, it will grow, the number of the CXL ASIC vendors, right, we saw the chart. It's growing, everybody has their own solution, has their own differentiations. Uh, and that also gives us challenges as well, right? So um, the infrastructure tools has to cope with all those varieties. So the challenges would be, because of those trends, the challenges would be, we need an enterprise class um, monitoring and remedi remediation, right? We have um, the data center numbers are growing, the, the number of servers are growing, the number of CXL devices are growing, but uh, our staffs cannot grow at the same, same, uh, same speed. The CXL ASIC needs to be managed by existing tool set. We need to be able to customize our, uh, we need to continue to our existing tool set, maybe add some options for CXL. Right, add some fields for CXL, that's it. But we do not want to use um, a totally new tool set. Um, and another challenge is that the CXL spec, DMTF spec, they all are evolving, right? There are still gaps in terms of dealing with at scale device management. So how to meet those challenges, right? So despite those challenges, we, 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 we have to solve those. Otherwise, we won't be able to get into the fleet. Next page. So now uh, we talk about the control pass technologies, and then uh, here we are talking about the solutions. So um, with today's device and the host on the market, um, so, so from the right to the left, right? So from the right-hand side, so 1.1 host, 2.0 device. So 1.1 host will come up in the market within probably half a year. Uh, like Intel Sapphire and AMD Genova, right, within half a year. 2.0 device, some of them are already on the market or very close to the market. So 2.0 device could run in either RCRB mode and non-RCRB mode, right? Today's kernel does not really work with those, 
um, in terms of device management. So we are working with the corner team, a corner community to address those things. So if you go to the Linux CXL mailing list, you will see the, the patches flying and then uh, very uh, active discussions are going on right at this moment. Now, fast forward a year, a year and a half later, we will have next generation of the process coming out that supports 2.0 host. And then combined with 2.0 device, uh, those present some differences comparing to the right hand side where let's say uh, with 2.0 host, 2.0 device, the device is a pool, is a full end point device. But with the right hand side, the device is actually a, a root complex integrated endpoint, right? And on the right hand side, the RCRBs, they are not visible by default to the operating system. So all those challenges need to be answered. Next page. Um, so on the other hand, the CXL device um, uh, on the control path, how does the host or open BMC or BMC talk to the CXL device? Right. So CXL spec answered it through the command uh, CXL command uh, interface. Um, so if you look at the CXL spec, it it defined uh, things like information and status um, commands. So you know the the CXL uh, device status, and uh, you can view the uh, CXL device events. Maybe there's an alert, hey, temperature is too high, or there's a hardware event. Um, or look at the logs, right? What's the boot log of the CXL device? Uh, you can use that to do the CXL device firmware update. Uh, you can uh, do some memory device commands like identified, uh, set up poison. Um, and uh, very important is that it also allows vendor defined commands. So we work with our vendors, we, we add those vendor Define, uh, define commands to meet the needs. And uh, in the meantime, we work with the CXL and the DMTF uh, consortium uh, industry standards, trying to incorporate as much as possible into standard. We do not want to have to deal with each one and every vendor to, to, to add those vendor defined commands and other commands. So those, those are the things that we try to make them comprehensive to meet our needs. Now it's here's turn. Thank you, Jonathan. Uh, so in this section, I'll talk about uh, basically what are the different solutions that we are working uh, towards building an ecosystems for infrastructure tooling uh, so we do not get uh, bound to a vendor-specific tools or any vendor-specific commands. Um, so I'll go over the various solutions that we are working. Um, here is the first one, which is a health monitoring. Uh, so if you take a look at it from a block, here is the basically an end-to-end -end, uh, infrastructure tooling uh, block diagram. Um, in the bottom, we have a CXL ASIC firmware, which gives us the insight into all the device-related health information. Um, the CXL uh, standard has basically defined the PCI and CXL interface, which gives us the insight into all the CCI mailbox commands, which allows us to retrieve all the health information of the devices. Uh, but if we take a look at from an upper stack standpoint, um, there is no ecosystem around the user space utilities or user space tools, which basically is standardized for different vendor specific um, uh, basically a different uh, memory expanders which are uh, built by the various vendors. So we are looking into standardizing an NDCTL, which gives us a library to basically issue the um, IOCTL commands uh, for mailbox uh, interfaces. Uh, so we are working towards standardizing libcxl um, as the first interface um, or the user space utility, which gives us an insight to all the device related health and telemetry information. The next solution, as Jonathan mentioned, is uh, standardizing on how BMC uh, gets the device inventory information for the uh, CXL endpoints, which includes the controller uh, and also the memory devices which are sitting behind the CXL controller. So if you look at the uh, current existing bindings, uh, we have a mailbox interface um, which we can use it to issue the CCI mailbox command from both the inbound interface um, or also from an out-of-band interface from an I2C standpoint. Um, but 
Currently, the industry uses the PLDM and MCTP bindings for the rest of the components into the system. So we are working with um, uh, DMTF uh, to standardize on an PLDM type for the CCI commands, um, which gives us uh, basically an MCTP binding for CCI commands over I2C or I3C. Um, and then we are going to uh, define a PLDM type for those uh, CCI commands uh, so we can standardize on the interface uh, that we can use it to basically get the inventory information of the various CXL proofs. The next is a device and uh, memory management. Um, so from a device management standpoint, the firmware management is the basically a bigger piece uh, whenever we talk about introducing new devices uh, into the uh, data center. Uh, from a firmware management standpoint, the CXL spec has already defined a very well defined uh, firmware uh, transfer, firmware activate, and get firmware info commands. Um, but when you look at the Linux driver, um, there is still not fully supported from a driver standpoint. There are still limitations. Um, for example, for firmware transfer, it's dependent on what is the backend flash device that we are using, um, what is the background command or operation that we are initiating uh, for every block that we transfer to the backend device for burning the flash uh, for the firmware transfer. Even for the activate, um, there are two modes which is specified. One is a firmware activation on a cold boot um, or an online firmware activation. But they are still not fully supported from the Linux driver standpoint because of some of the uh, security reasons. The next one is how do we plan to do a memory management for all the uh, memory devices which are uh, basically uh, sitting behind the CXL controller. Um, if you look at the native memory, which is CPU attached, um, we use uh, we have a very well defined SM BIOS tables, which gives us an insight into the device uh, memory inventory, um, uh, all the failure modes for the uh, memory devices, the training logs. Um, but today we do not have any any specs which talks about how do we want to expose the CXL memory devices uh, to the host and how do we provide the visibility of those CXL memory devices to the host. So we plan to extend um, same uh, types for the DRAM memory devices uh, which are sitting on the CXL, uh, uh, CXL expansion board. Um, and we also plan to use or extend the BDAT spec uh, to include the DIM training logs for the CXL uh, DIMs. The last one is the performance, um, which is the most important one. Um, we know about the CDAT table, which gives us the insight into uh, the expected latency numbers for the CXL devices and also the bandwidth utilization um, for the uh, memory devices. But when you talk about uh, running uh, systems, what is the bandwidth utilization that you are seeing on a current running system? Or what are the latency numbers you are seeing currently on the running, um, running for the running applications which are using the CXL devices? Um, so in CXL spec 3.0, um, we introduced the CXL performance monitoring unit, which is CPMU. Um, and this performance monitoring unit gives us then insight into all types of uh, CXL.mem transactions and gives us an insight into what kind of latency numbers we are seeing it, what kind of performance utilization that we are seeing it for the running systems. Uh, this is still being implemented from a Linux driver standpoint. Uh, so we are working with Linux uh, driver community to um, basically architect and design uh, such a way that we can make use of uh, CPMU uh, in the current running systems. We already uh, heard from a lot of uh, CPU vendors and also the memory vendors about how, uh, how much an effort is being put into having a rich RAS features. But when we take a look at from an infrastructure tooling standpoint, uh, the most important part is how do we get the visibility into those RAS features from host side of it or from an infrastructure tooling standpoint. So as um, um, AMD uh, mentioned, uh, we are working with them uh, to basically define an end-to-end -end, um, user space, kernel space, and device uh, specific commands to provide us the rich RAS features and also the visibility into various errors and various failures uh, from the CXL device standpoint. 
And the very last and most important piece, uh, which always gets ignored, uh, is the resets. Um, these are very difficult to achieve. There have been uh, conventional resets which are very well defined, um, like hot reset, warm reset, cold reset. Uh, but when we talk about anything to do with the uh, new protocols and new transactions being introduced um, from the CXL spec standpoint, uh, you need to work with the CXL spec to basically have a CXL reset. Um, from theoretically, these resets have been defined very well into the spec, but when you talk about the implementation, it is extremely difficult to uh, basically and terminate any transactions which are ongoing, especially these are very, uh, these are CPU or host initiated transactions. They are extremely uh, sensitive. Um, it can uh, basically create a system fatal events. Uh, so there's a lot of basically um, the uh, thorough implementation and architecture needs to be done from a Linux implementation standpoint to support the CXL reset. So uh, to conclude our session, the call to actions is, uh, as we mentioned, we are working with various forums, uh, CXL forums, uh, SSWG, MSWG, MGST, and the relevant standards to make CXL as a first class citizens into our infrastructure so we can uh, manage them at scale uh, with, the, with the basically an industry standard tools. Um, we are also working with the kernel and OS teams uh, to uh, add an end-to-end -end support for uh, kernel drivers, kernel um, event management infrastructures, um, and also the rich RAS features to give us an end-to-end -end insight into all the failures, health monitoring, and telemetry information. So please join us uh, with all these forums. Uh, there's tons of good work going, a lot of innovations are going on. Uh, to make the CXL as a first-class citizens into our data center. Thank you. <laughs>